everybody, back for a short segment. Um, today's a bit of a slow day, so I thought I'd take a little bit of a drive and go and check out one of the new superchargers that Tesla is currently uh, constructing close to me. It'll be the closest one to me. Um, prior to this one, the closest one uh, would be at the uh, Tesla showroom in Toronto at Lawrence and the uh, 404. So, and that's a a really bad location because of course that's where they deliver their cars and that's where they have the showroom and that supercharger is always busy it's pretty crazy so uh, they're building a new one at the uh, Vaughn Mills Mall so I'm gonna take a little drive down there and check it out but since I have a little bit of a drive ahead of me it's not too far but uh, I thought I'd just take a little bit of time here and just talk about a couple different things and um, the first one is uh, I want to talk about the Roadster now I know I'm a little bit late to the game on this um, topic because, of course, the Roadster's been talked to death on the internet and YouTube. And um, I'm not always first to come out with this stuff, but I like to kind of um, um, absorb some of the information, just kind of think about it, and um, and then if I feel that it's uh, worthy, then I'll talk about it. But in the case of this, I think the Roadster is really worthy to talk about. Um, a couple things too. Of course, you know we saw the semi truck as well. Um, the first thing I want to mention is the interior, and I said this before, and I mentioned it on the last uh, Model 3 Owners Club show, and I've been saying it on the forums too, um, that if we see the interior of the semi-truck specifically, because of course we didn't really know that the roads were going to come out, so it was more about the semi-truck, that if we saw the interior of the semi-truck looking anything like the Model 3, that we knew that uh, that was going to be the indication of the future of Tesla's design. For the interior on the cars and of course if you look at the uh, pictures of the uh, of, of the semi truck it's a clear indicator that the model 3 is hugely influenced in there so i'm a firm believer that uh those design cues that we've been seeing of course on the three and now the semi truck are going to make their way to the uh, s and the x eventually in due time uh scuttlebutt going around uh, i've read on the internet a couple different places that that may happen in the second quarter of uh, 2018 so uh, should coincide around the t second anniversary of the uh, facelift on the Model S. So uh, if that's important to you, maybe you want to wait a little bit, who knows. Um, that HVAC system is definitely there in the semi-truck. I think it's going to come to the S eventually. Um, I'm more, honestly, I'm really more interested in uh, an update in the computer system that drives the main screen because in the Model 3, it's so much faster than the S. So for uh, daily uh, usage, uh, uh, you know, the maps or the responsiveness, I think that would be really well, um, really welcome on those cars. Anyhow, the second point I want to make uh, really has to do with the battery. Now, you know, of course, when, you know, they, they started talking about the range of the Roadster and the semi-truck, I mean... I look, I read the internet just like everybody else, and I see all this conjecture and the speculation, and I'm sensing a theme here uh, with a lot of people on the internet seem to thinking that we're looking at some kind of new battery um, chemistry breakthrough. And personally, I don't think that's the case here. Um, I'm actually a very firm believer uh, when it comes to Tesla that the simplest answer is usually the correct one. And that seems to be borne out with the way that they do things. And what I mean by that is the Roadster and the semi-truck are using the new 2170 cell. Um, I, I'm a firm believer here that Tesla is all in on this new cell. They just eventually have to phase out the 18650 they've been using on the S and the X. And I do believe that that's coming in some kind of refresh to the battery technology uh, sooner rather than later on those cars. So just as a reminder, the 2170 cell is only about 10% larger in uh, diameter and tallness, or, or length, if you will, compared to the 18650 that they've been using for years. But volumetrically, it's 47% larger. Now, what that does is that it gives you more room inside to put more of the jelly roll, so to speak, um, and more capacity inside the cell. How much extra capacity hmm, is up for debate because I'm not a battery technologist. I, I don't know all the, specific, uh, all the specifics about that. But for a, a, a slight increase in exterior uh, dimensions, you're looking at a, a large increase in potential energy storage on these cells. And, it, and of course, they are using these cells, and a slight variant, of course, on the uh, power packs and the power walls. So, I mean, 
you know, Tesla's really in on this on this cell. So I, I really do believe that that's exactly what they're using in the uh, Roadster and uh, the semi truck. Now, in the case of the Roadster, because they've said, oh, it's a 200 uh, kilowatt hour battery pack and it has 620 miles or a thousand kilometers worth of range. Now, how convenient is that is that this battery pack is just about double the size of the Model 3 battery pack. Now, when the Model 3 battery pack is 75 kilowatt hours, so 200, you know, call it double, a little bit more. And the range is basically double the long range of the Model 3. Now, I know there's been a lot of conjecture on the internet, of course, that they're talking about oh, some new battery chemistry. I don't think that's what the case is here. I think the Roadster is specifically designed to accommodate a double layer battery cell. Now what I'm talking about is, is, is stacked modules inside the car. Now, of course, we don't know how high the car is off the ground, but uh, some of the people said there um, at the at the, um, at the delivery event, not the delivery event, the, uh, the reveal event, I'm sorry, um, that it, um, it had a little bit of higher floor, I think in some cases, I, I, again, I can't verify that, but I do believe that that's what they're doing. It's either a double layer battery pack or they're doing more what Lucid did with the air and that's more of a sculpted battery where they're, um, you know, the battery pack is, is very bespoke for this car. And instead of being a pure skateboard that maybe there's some, some humps in some areas where they could fit a little bit more. So, uh, you know, time will tell exactly what's going on, but I think that's the simplest answer. It's just more cells. And um, so that really indicates that they're totally in on this. Um, of course, that would translate equally well to the uh, semi-truck because it's a much larger vehicle, of course, so you just have more room to fit um, some of these battery cells. Speaking of the semi-truck, the pricing, holy mackerel, um, way lower than uh, than I had expected. I was figuring it was going to be anywhere from four hundred to five hundred thousand um, dollars for the uh, U.S. of course uh, for the semi-truck, and uh, they're coming in at um, one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand on this car, or on this truck, I should say. So what that indicates to me is, uh, if you do a little bit of math here, if they are indeed using this 2170 cell, which I believe they are, <laughs> there's some serious uh, cost savings involved here. So it would not surprise me that Tesla has finally broken the uh, $100, uh, uh, the $100 per kilowatt hour uh, cost factor on this battery cell. So the 2170 has some serious legs. Here's a beautiful white Model X going by. Anyway, um, so we're, we're, we're definitely looking at some major savings on this. So the, these cells really do have legs. So I, again, I truly believe that Tesla is really behind this cell and uh, in due time, we will see it migrate to the S and the X. On another note, we'll just talk about Model 3 for a couple of minutes too. Um, Model 3 is still seeing uh, regular software updates coming out to the car. Um, there was a software update that just came out about a day and a half ago and it finally enabled um, uh, the FM radio in the car. Um, I've had two reports, one of them says it works great, the other one says it was a little bit buggy, so I think that they're probably still working on that. But again, once uh, general deliveries of the cars uh, finally happen, that most of these things will be uh, hopefully worked out. Uh, what's the other thing? Oh yeah, they added easy entry, which is, uh, you know, getting out of there, setting the car in such a way so that uh, when you either lock the car or you get in it, uh, you can have the seat and the steering wheel in a different position. So it allows you to get in and out of the car. Um, I like that feature. I have it here on my Lincoln and I use it all the time. It's really great. I'm not a big guy, but it's just nice to be able to get in and out quite a bit easier for those kind of things. So it's nice to see that um, actually on all the cars now. It's a great little feature. Um, the other bit of information that just came out, courtesy of Fred at Electric, that uh, looks like um, Panasonic um, has opened their mouth a little bit and spoken, uh, said that the Gigafactory cell production, or not cell production, the module production, which is one of the bottlenecks on the Model 3, is going to be lifted fairly soon. Looks like Tesla finally has a handle on this situation so that uh, we're going to see some, uh, some, some pretty sharp increases in Model 3 production really soon. Um, I know one of our other members on our forum has uh, confirmed his order. Now, he's a current uh, Tesla Model S owner. So, again, he takes priority over everybody else, but he's confirmed his order, and he said that he's still expecting it in about four weeks' time. So sometime in December, he should be getting his Model 3, so that's good news. Again, for everybody outside of the U.S., man, it's still late 2018, going into 2019. So until Tesla really has a handle on this production uh, bottleneck and really increasing the uh, production, 
uh, up to say three to five thousand cars a week uh, by the first quarter. We really won't have any kind of updates on you know when the cars will actually start coming out. So Tesla still has a placeholder showing uh, 2018, late 2018 uh, for deliveries outside of the U.S. So if it changes, eh, I'll let you know. You know what? I just remembered something. Um, I've had my Navdi for six months. So I thought I'd uh, take a couple of minutes and just give you my thoughts on it um, and just give you a six month update on it. Uh, if you watch the video that I did of uh, the unboxing and the setup, I'll put a link in the video and you can watch it if you like. Um, I still use it every day. I have it here in my Lincoln. It stays here permanently and I really like it. Uh, I don't find myself using the navigation system in the Lincoln anymore, mainly because it sucks so bad. Thanks, Microsoft. Whatever. Anyhow, oh, well, by the way, when I when I say that, it's because I have a 2015. In 2016, uh, Lincoln or Ford, whatever, updated to Sync 3, which uses a QNX operating system. They don't use Windows CE anymore, so I guess it sucks a little, bad, uh, a little less, uh, but it's still not the best. But this NAVD makes up for that because it ties to my phone and because with all the voice, <clears throat> excuse me, all the voice commands that I can do with it, it's truly wonderful. So uh, really big thumbs up. Now, again, when we get the Tesla, I don't know whether I'll move it to that, of course, because it has a much better navigation system than any other car on the market. So uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe it might go in my wife's car or something, uh, and I'll tie her phone to it. And she can use it, but uh, she has a little Garmin that I got her, but she doesn't drive all that much. So for her, navigation is only really important when she needs to go somewhere that she's unfamiliar with. But uh, big thumbs up on the Navdi. I really do like it. Of course, Black Friday is over with right now, so I can't tell you where they get a good deal. But, you know, if you Google around, you might be able to find something if that's of interest to you. Again, watch the video that I did and see if it's for you. But we're here at uh, Vaughn Mills, one of the biggest malls. This place is nuts all the time. Hey, look, check it out. Over there. And 16 lined up. This is going to be a 20 stall installation. Supercharger cabinets. These actually contain the chargers themselves. 